Well, I guess I better get my fraps on and, uh, and we'll uh, do another tutorial for you guys since you guys have been asking so much. This is like the tiniest segment of just, of just aligning the camera and, um, and, and doing the modeling of the scene geometry and why that's important. Lining the camera is, is, can be the most frustrating thing, but if you follow a few simple like tricks and principles, I find it to be quite easy. Number one good habit is uh, file structure. So you wanna set your project folder, basically under your file menu, go to manage, set project folder. I've already done it for this one. Basically it creates all these folders for you, most of which I don't use, but the ones you do use, it saves your scenes in there. It basically gives you a constant file structure. Um, number two, whenever you open up a scene, Always go into grids and snaps here, grids and snap settings. Make sure that you have like the scale of your grids and snaps set up right. I was working in meters, so we have to set this to 0.25. That's gonna allow me to know that every single, for this grid, everything is 0.25 meters. Viewport background, and viewport background right there. It's the same as just hitting Alt B. Um, check the box for display background files, and we're gonna pull up our background. New one that I did from right on the street. All right, next we wanna do is click perspective and click show safe frame. You wanna absolutely make sure you do that before aligning any objects to your camera because otherwise it's, it's, it's distorting what it actually is. You wanna make sure safe frame is on. Control C creates a camera from whatever view you're in. So it's gonna create that camera. Um, or you can go to create cameras and create camera from view. Setting your camera right is, I think it's, I almost break it into about four steps. Step one, you have to know the height that the camera was when you shot. If you don't know the height when the camera was shot, you have to look at other indicators in the scene. You can kind of see that the camera, oh, it must be level with like the back of these cars, which are about a meter high. You can, you can look for hints for what else is even, where the horizon line is. But the best thing to do is we actually took a picture when I was taking the shot, which is a habit we've kind of gotten into. Uh, so you can remember and reference back to how high it was, which was, it was right up about to my belly button, which is about like 1.2 meters up. So that's something you know. You know the height that the camera was if you, if you paid attention when you're, when you're doing it. The second thing you know, is in 99% of shots, you can see the horizon line. I click on the modify panel while the camera is selected and click on show horizon. It's gonna pop this black line across my, across my viewport here, across my camera view. If I take the target, which, the camera is, which, which is the target where the camera is pointing, and move it down, I can affect where that, where that horizon line is without moving the camera up and down. So I wanna line that up with where the infinity point of the scene should be. If I know that my camera is four and a half, is, is a, approximately you know, one meter off the ground, 1.2 meters off the ground. The infinity point should be at the end of the street there where there's like a wall, it should be 1.2 meters up that wall on the fence is where that infinity line should be. So I line it up approximately with where that is and then we have that locked in. So now we have two things that are for sure. We know the height of the, height of the, infin the, the, the angle that the camera should be at as far as vertically up and down and we have the position of the camera in space based on the ground. We can now move the camera from left to right and you can see kind of how the perspective, how it moves through there. Now the third, most important thing for lining the camera up is you have to make sure that your, the, the field of view of your camera is accurate. And the way you figure out what the field of view of your camera is, is you, you can kind of eyeball it, you can kind of figure it out by putting some geometry in there and doing it. But what the, the easiest way to do is to look at the lens of your camera, whatever millimeter your lens is. And now this gets, this gets kind of complex because depending on the sensor size of your camera, there's different crop factors. So you're gonna have to do some Googling and Google your specific camera and come up with a crop factor and whatever millimeters the, the lens is on and do the multiplication to figure it out. But this, this camera, the FS700, since it has, a, uh, it has, I think it's a two thirds inch sensor, the crop factor is about 1.5 to 1.6. And so you take the millimeters of the lens, which is a 16 millimeter lens when I was shooting it, and multiply it by that, getting about 24. And so only by having the right, the right field of view in there are you actually able to line up the, the scene appropriately. And so it's, it's very important to lock this down before you start trying to align geometry. Last tip I'd have is always try to align your scenes so that if you have right angles, most of the time if you're gonna be in a city or if you're gonna have houses, anything that's, out just, that's not just completely nature, um, you're gonna usually have some, some angles that you can line things up, so some parallel lines. And so I've got, on this street, I've got, I've got, the, I've got lots of parallel lines. I've got the two buildings going down. I've got the, the dotted you know, yellow line down the middle. I've got the gutter going down there, and those are gonna make it very easy for me to align this scene. Because we have the right field of view, as it's moving through the scene, notice how it's, it's basically parallel with all those different lines as it goes past them. So once you have your camera roughed in like that, you can basically start building the scene geometry. Now this street, I've already, I've already taken measurements outside. It's about 60, about 60 feet wide, just over 60 feet wide, so it's about 20 meters wide. So I'm gonna set the width of the box to that, always working in scale. And I'm gonna set the length of this box to uh, be like 100 meters long. After we get the ground plane in there, we're gonna open up another box and put a box for each of the walls. I know these walls are about, about 18 feet high, so um, I've done so many videos on this street. I just know it inside and out. 18 feet high, so make, set that to about six meters and move that in there. Okay, perfect. 
Once we have that, I'm going to clone that box so it goes over to the other side. The way you clone things in 3ds Max is you hold shift and then click on the, on the move button and drag it over there and position that so it's for the other wall there. So the reason why we build scene geometry, there's a few different reasons. Um, number one, if you're going to do physics in the scene, you need something for things to interact with, to break into, right, to hit. Um, the second reason is if you want to, any object you're putting in the scene, you need to be able to cast shadows from that object. In order to cast shadows on the ground, you need to define where that ground is. The third thing is uh, reflections. Um, by modeling the scene geometry and doing the camera map projection for the background, we're, telling th we're basically telling 3ds Max that from this 2D image, we're, we're defining that this is the 3D space that this, that this image existed in. This is the, the geometry. So it knows that any pixel that corresponds with that position is now not just a pixel that's in the 2D space, but it's on that, it's on that point in the plane. Now the problem is you still have things that are behind the camera, and so for some stuff you have to get more complex, like take pictures and model things and put them back there. But most of the time, like 99% of the time, you're not actually going to do that. It'll be enough just to model the things that are in your scene and then also do the spherical environment. So the spherical environment, when you move around, it just, it's, just, it's for things that are really far away. The model stuff is for things that are really close. So there's no set point of when you're done or how, how detailed you have to get with it. It really depends on the scene that you're doing. If you're just putting, uh, putting two spheres in the scene, like we're, like we're about to do here, um, you don't need to get that detailed because it's just going to put a shadow down on the ground. That basically concludes what I want to go over today in detail. I'm just going to really quickly throw it together so you can see the rest of the process. OK, camera wrap in there. Camera, select that camera to get it in there. Bitmap we're putting in there is our street background. Now we need to apply this texture to the background. Okay. Okay, next material. And this is gonna go on the first ball. And that one's gonna be our gray ball. Material V-ray. V-ray material. Put that on our other ball. Reflections up to 100%. That is going to be our chrome ball, V-Ray Sun. Now it's 3 p.m. when we shot this, so about this angle right here. Bring that sun up into the sky to about the right spot. As soon as you put a sun in the scene, you want to make sure you pop over into your environment effects by hitting 8 and go V-Ray Exposure Control. Put in there from EV. EV is daylight. I'm going to bring it down in exposure just a little bit right now because I know it's going to be overexposed. And adjust my white balance temperature to 6,000, which is what I shot it at. Drag V-Ray Sky over to the Environment Skylight Override. And then I take this one immediately after that, switch this over to be a bitmap to just be our, just be our background pictures. Bring our V-Ray Sky into there and specify that sun node. Sun intensity, just for past experience, is always a little bit too bright on a, day, on a bright day, so bring that down to 0 0.8. Environment, add in the bitmap. Bitmap this time, this is going to be our spherical environment. Everything gets edited in the material editor. Right, set to environment and spherical environments. Let's bring it up to about, uh, say, about 40. The sun was up in the sky over there, and right now the sun's reflecting back at us right here. It seems to be flipped over, so we're going to invert it. We're going to flop it horizontally by making it, uh, let's see, negative, negative one instead of positive one. So it looks good, but it's in the wrong spot. So we're going to have to rotate it. The way we rotate it is by doing our offset here. It's Bump it up a little bit and just try it out. So you can see the building reflecting on the side there like it should. We see the back of the street reflecting over there. We see the red building in the right spot and the sun is reflecting off the very top, which is right where it should be. So we can see um, the, wherever the ball is, you see it reflects back the right thing right on the ball there. It's got the, it's got the strip right there. If we didn't model that, we wouldn't have that and we also wouldn't have the shadows down on the ground, that interaction, so that's perfect. So the final step is to not actually render it out like this, which is, which is a complete image, but we'll be turning off the entire background and just rendering out the balls and the shadows, and we'll be comping those back in as separate layers and later. Um, you you want to get in the habit of always doing it that way rather than doing it all in 3ds Max, because it gives you, ultimately gives you so much more control. I'll put those uh, background assets on Twitter for you to check out and enjoy, and we'll go through those steps with a fine-tooth comb at a later date.